if people don't know by now, uh, Spring is the first of four of a four project series. And it in itself is a body of work, but the goal behind the series is to create a larger body of work that tells its own story as well. It's like the first chapter of the book. Where do start? Riding for the squad, we ain't trying to be jealous. Give me my flowers while I can still smell them. Tell them I prefer money trees over y'all feelings. Picking dollar bills while they falling from the ceiling. Like, nah, so today nah. we're sitting down to kind of break down the first chapter. And you wanted to do this because there's a lot of layers to it, right? What do you think are some of the ideas and concepts that you feel like we need to explore? To dive into this project, I really wanted to sort of peel back some of the layers and the thought process that went into it once I finally decided like, yes, this is the direction I'm going with it. I, I kind of look at the last four years of not dropping a solo project, like that was winter. That was the hibernation period. And this is the new life. This is the seed blooming, you know, and the music coming out. I like how you start the album, too. It's very upbeat. It's triumphant. But it's also very detailed and introspective in terms of the lyrics. So you're talking about dropping out of school. You talk about beefing with Lil Bro. These are very personal things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to freestyle with Oriana. She would throw me words. You remember that? Remember back we lived for Grandma K. Uncle Danny's still the older brother that I never had. Yeah, remember that? So, you know, you talk about your grandmother, you talk about your Uncle Danny. And, you know, as a listener, you feel like, man, I, I'm really getting to know him through these bits and pieces that he's sharing. And so I was thinking about this project as you kind of taking off a lot of the armor that maybe in some ways you've been forced to carry as a battle rapper. Right. Um, and so it almost feels like by sharing all of these pieces of yourself that you're saying, you know what, I, I don't necessarily need all of that. In fact, I'm stronger by sharing my vulnerabilities. What, yeah. what, what do you think prompted that shift? Because it does feel like a more personal project than anything else I've heard from you. Even though you've always thrown personal things in there, right, this right. feels like a more personal effort. Why do you think that is? I think there's like a few elements to that. A couple things directly, like like conversations uh, with like my girl, right? And listens to to you know typically more like southern music and then just not hip hop. You know what I mean? Rosalia and a lot of international music and and, and Don Richard and a lot of different things. Um, and has a different palette, but she really listens and respect and, and sees it all and, and has learned even a lot about battle rap as I'm sure most battle rappers, girlfriends are forced to, uh, forced to learn. But one thing, well, a conversation we have in particular is just like, in a sense, her kind of calling me out in a way, and it's something I knew, it was like, I needed to hear it from an outside source of saying like, I feel like you don't put, a, you know, knowing you, I feel like you don't put a lot of who you actually are into the music. You know, there's glimpses and, and the music I put out is me. That isn't to say that, but there's a lot of other elements that I think I haven't shared. And I think that's where, you know, you're talking about the armor. It's, it's, it's armor by omission in a way. I thought about that. I had a, that was a real key conversation. And then in the same time period, the uh, uh, homie Bliss from Bliss Tenesso, a big, a big group out of Australia. I toured with him in Canada. He came over as I was like, not finished, but I had a skeleton of spring and an idea. And I played um, some of the songs, even songs like Be Better. And one thing he kind of shared with me was like, you know, sometimes it, you feel real self-deprecating and or, or it's dark that mirrored the conversation I had with my girl where it's like, you're saying like a theme is like being cold hearted. And it really made me reflect and realize like, I do this a lot in my music. For one, it's like popular tropes, but also it's speaking from a place of, there are things that I'm guilty about in my past. There are these things. And then I'm only, if by only shining a light on that, I'm not giving a whole picture. So it's hard to connect with that even more even on the song like Be Better, right? I played that song for Bliss and he's like, yo, it's tied. It seems really like you're really going hard on yourself. And I sat back and I thought about it 
you know, after being defensive, like, nah, it's not like, and I realized like, yeah. So I performed a version that and toured with the version of that song with Slumville that when I went to re-release it, I rewrote the whole first verse. And the, the reason was, and it's like in one line, but also in the theme of the first verse, but I said, just trying to be better every day. So it's not self-deprecating when I say, don't be like me. Be better. That's like dressing it directly, but even just the theme of that verse is more so aspiring to bet for self-betterment. And the theme of the project to me with spring was there's a lot of self-reflection, but I don't want to be dark with it. I want it to feel like spring. So even in those moments of depth or heaviness and self-reflection, I want it to feel good because it does feel good when you come out of that. You know, I really like that, man. Yeah, because it does feel good when you come out of that. And it also feels good when you reflect on it, if you reflect on it with the intention to grow right. Right? Um, or with the intention of seeing how far you've come. Like yeah. when, you, when you rap about um, fans that love me, but I'm still chasing it high. I felt as a team buying a new washer and dryer for my dad's house with that old money. Might not mean much to you, but if you only knew them clean clothes felt like a mansion that had the ocean view. If only one outfit was clean, I might not go to school. Wear it Monday, skip till Friday, wear it and hope no one knew. Oh. That does feel good. So maybe mm -hmm. it didn't feel good as a kid, but it, but it feels good now to be able to kind of turn the tables, right? Exactly. One of the things that you also talk about is you say, we only know fragments because we only show fragments. And it kind of looks at fragments in a negative light. Like you only know bits and pieces of everybody's story, which is, which is true, obviously. But I also think about the fragments that we show. Little details, right? Like watching Family Matters, you know, the washer dryer thing that we talk about, um, or your parents' divorce that you mentioned. From, I'm from the Jones, no. my comfort zone is on my own. Yeah, that made me strong. My pops and mom couldn't get along. The no love was lost. It all falls when the summer's gone. All of these things feel like they're fragments, but they're the right ones. You know, like they're the right oh. ones to tell the portrait of who you are. And so you get all these little fragments here and there throughout the project, and then you feel like at the end, oh, I have a better picture of who this person is. You're right, like throughout the whole project, I'm giving fragments, but like I've always given sort of the same fragments, whereas like there was, you know, more in now in retrospect realizing I was just giving more and more fragments to form a better picture by the end of this one. The other thing that made me think of is like, if I'm learning a lot about you by hearing these fragments, what are you learning about yourself I didn't re realize that I was creating from a guarded place. Throughout the, the journey being an artist, there's been a lot of turning points and points where I felt like I was cracking codes, breaking down barriers and everything. And then in doing that, you know, I felt like I got comfortable. And, you know, I say it on Marble Statues, like uh, sometimes it feels like I'm writing the same song a million times and still can't get it right. And that's like one of my favorite lyrics because it isn't the most clever, the mo but it's like the realest thing that I was able to capture. And it was a moment of like an awe moment, like, oh, it's so simple, but I, I really, I, I'm identifying that feeling now directly and can understand it a little bit better. The, the line is, sometimes when I write, I get a glimpse of my inner light. I mostly end up feeling like I've been writing the same song a million times and still can't get it right, right? right. But, but this project feels like the first half of that. It feels like you got a glimpse of the inner light more times <laughs> <laughs> than you felt like you were writing the same. That's what the line, the line's reflective, you know? It's right. not even necessarily about this body of work, it's just, a, it's one of those like identifying that, that, that fragment in, in retrospect. It's more fulfilling having something where I'm like, I hit the, like that line on marble statues or like the line on ghosted them on the, on the second beat of ghosted them when I said, Sometimes I feel out of place, like I'm not really from here. Like I inherited these memories and this identity and I'm waiting to go back somewhere. Like I wake up from this dream and think, oh yeah, I am me. That dream was weird, just play along.
Like that line to me is one of my favorite things I've ever written because I finally was able not only to identify this feeling that I've had for a long time, but to be able to put it into the music. Was that a good feeling or was that a negative feeling? Because you could take it different ways. Um, you could take it like, man, um, maybe I don't deserve everything that I have and, and I feel out of place. Or I feel out of place because this life is incredible and I'm very grateful that I have it. But wow, how did I get so lucky? You know, like there's different ways to look at that yeah. line. Where were you in life when you wrote it? And, and, and what were you thinking and why did you feel that way? it's a spectrum you know like there's there's moments where it's like damn this is surreal that i'm here you know coming from uh where i was at i never could have like guessed that i would have a been still rapping or been able to travel the world or you know be on fire in the booth or any of these things um and then there's days where i'm just like i, I feel out of place but really where that line comes from isn't positive or negative and I, I think a lot of people could relate to this, especially as of lately, but this is something that a, a, a real booming feeling that I've had for a few years now of just like, this doesn't seem real. Like, I don't feel like, like I look in the mirror, I'm like, yeah, I'm me, but I remember, I feel like I re vaguely remember something else or being something else or like, this is a dream. As you're talking about it, though, it makes me think about growth you know, the shedding of old selves, you know, and that's, that's what we do when we grow. Right. And right. Be, being a new version, a new edition of yourself, you could feel a little detached. Like, was that really me? Because I'm so far removed. What do you think it was that kind of forced that shift that was so powerful that sometimes you look in the mirror and say, man, was that really me? So when I really think about like going in a time machine, going back to like 2008, I was in a, uh, a seven year relationship, like from high school, you know, like 16 to like 23. Right. And, uh, you know, she broke up with me or whatever. We had a spot. She moved out and there was this period of time where I was just shattered, you know, and it was a lot of self-reflection in that. And it was a lot of growing pains. Like I was in a really, really bad place, like in, a, in a many ways, financially, uh, you know, uh, emotionally, and, and also just had a, an identity crisis, you know, and had a lot of self-reflection and realized that the, the person I was, I was so much the battle rapper, like in human to human relationships in and everything was sort of this like contrarian and combative like i'm the smart ass like i'm thinking like this is who i am and so i'm gonna take that everywhere with me and and i you know even talking with friends like you know years later they they seen a huge shift in me and really having to sit and look in the mirror and reflect on who I was. And at that time, I would look back at certain interactions like, damn, like, that's who I am. Like, I don't want to be that person, you know? And a lot of uh, work was done, you know, on myself at that point, moving forward to kind of pull myself out of that hole. Fast forward to, you know, 2015, 2016, five year relationship, you know, ended. And I was already coming back and forth to California, to LA, working with Chase, staying six weeks at a time. And then, you know, I broke up with that, that long, out of that long term relationship. And then after a few months, was just like, I felt like an outsider in my own city is like the friends thing of like splitting friends. And then, like, you know, seeing people, a lot of people weren't making music anymore. And, it, everything became like really like is there even a place for me in this city anymore you know like I'm, I'm spending most of my time in LA and that's where I can be productive and I'm, and I'm with Chase and and making music and that's what makes me happy so I was like whatever I'm gonna move and I moved and I like Chase had a spot and he was there like you could stay on my couch for as long as you need to get on your feet and I just like lived literally in the studio for like a year and that was another real significant thing, getting out of my comfort zone, getting out of my bubble, uh, and another moment of self-reflection to look back and like do a self-audit, you know, um, who, who am I, who, who was I like in that relationship, 
who, because people are mirrors, you know, and whether it be friends, family, strangers, people are mirrors, and we use them as mirrors to, you know, to gauge our personality. Our identity is largely based on the mirrors that we have, the people we keep around us. That's how we sort of learn about ourselves, you know? And so it was another self audit period. And in doing that, I also realized like I wanted to do more musically and go through another growth period with that. So those are like the major, I think, landmark events that, you know, have inspired those sort of like moltings, I guess you could say, you know? You said people are mirrors, yeah. um, made me think of um, motion blur. Why, why were those stories important for you to share in particular? Those stories in particular have just had a, a place in, you know, learning a, about myself even. Like, I'll say like the first verse is about me. Uh, young man brushed the dirt off his shoulders, the world in front of him. Used to be down bad, the new beginners who split personalities and tug of war till they wore each other out and nothing ever gets truly finished. Oh, that's too familiar. It's been a running theme of like these new beginnings and seeds growing. And in that, I, I even talk about like feeling like nothing ever gets truly finished. And these other stories that are in there have been, when I say at the end of like, sometimes we look at people certain ways because we think we know who they are. We have a reflection. We judge them from that position, from that filter. And I sort of had that shattered. I sort of you know, things came out with certain relationships I've had that I was like, wow, I was really looking at that all wrong and treating that person from, I thought, a, an appropriate place for their behavior and, and realizing like, damn, if I only knew these things, that our relationship would have been totally different or I wouldn't have judged them for that. So that bit where I'm talking about like not judging people and, and Sometimes we feel left out because, you know, we don't get an all that access pass to them, but maybe we didn't ever create a safe space for them to be that vulnerable in the first place. That's me talking to me and having, because going through it directly and realizing like I shouldn't have judged or treated this person from that perspective. I had no idea they were dealing with that, you know? Throughout the album, the sequencing is really good. I didn't realize what song we were on because I was like, wait, it, this is still the same song or it's a new song. And I, you can't really tell because it flows so well that mm -hmm. you don't know if this is the previous song, the next one. And at some point it no longer matters <laughs> because you're just listening to it as a body of work. Right. I was thinking about that attention to detail because not every artist does that. What inspired you to be like all right i'm gonna make sure that the sequencing is so on point that it feels so connected i was there was a, a period of time like a, a month or two where i'm like man i want to put this out spring okay spring i got i knew like okay to me spring sounds like soulful beats self-reflection but brighter and vibe and i sort of had the the overall picture so then once I was going into what songs to use for that, there was certain things where I'm like, well, there's this little piece of this song. I really like that, but I, I don't think it's standalone. And now it, that I think about it, like it fits with this song, you know, and it, it was really like just inch by inch, song by song started to become clearer and it was just about putting the pieces together even like with the second song on ghosted them right i had ghosted them as like sort of a longer version of that first song by itself and i was like i like this but I, it, 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 something's missing i don't want to make it longer and actually i hit up the homie sm because he he's good about like he produces his own shit but he'll just like loop a sample and just rap on it and I'm like, I feel like I need that. I need just the open space, no production, and add that as a piece, because that's a, it's, it's part of a bigger production, but it's stripped down in its nature. So he's like, I got you. And he sent three uh, loops, essentially, and two of them made the album, which is uh, the second half of Ghost of Them and then Sangria Sunsets. He sent it, I was like, perfect. And that night I wrote Sangria Sunsets, 
And um, then I pieced the other thing with Ghost. You know, one of the little tidbits, I guess, for the fans is like, you know, the album ends with your knees. And then if you let it play back, it starts with her. Right, yeah. And that's such a really cool little thing that you won't get the first time you listen to it. How it came to be with my niece is she's just a trip. She's hilarious. She's a little light beam. Aaliyah, she's, she's too funny. And we like FaceTime all the time. What she typically does is just start singing. She's singing like, you want to hear a song I wrote? And I'm like, all right. And then she just like freestyles this song where she's singing and bringing up things we were just talking about or whatever. And I'm like, yo, okay. I'm like, you want to you wanna rap? I'm like, I'll go first. I FaceTime my niece and we battled. I killed her though. My girl like, mm, you got 30 by a six year old. I mean, let's just say debatable. And so we would do that. It's like a running, a running thing that we do when we talk. And one day I was just like, I'm going to record it. And, you know, I think it might be tied to go on the album somewhere. I hadn't even um, done lock saw yet, you know, but I was like, oh, I'm going to record this. And sort of without her knowing, I recorded one of our FaceTime calls for like a half hour, you know? And that's where I pulled what she says at the very beginning. That's just like from our conversation or when we were about to battle, actually. I was like, oh, are you ready? And she was like, like, let's see, where do I start? And like, that's how I start the album. I just cut that out and put it there, you know? And obviously, you know, we got her verse at the end of Lock Saw. Because you're so low. It's been so long putting the, this project out and everything. Like I really, piece by piece, the vision became clear of like, I really wanted it to be something special to come back to, you know? I, you. I, I do believe she got you though. <laughs> you. <laughs> um, even that is a part of your personality that fans are going to get to see a little more of. And, you know, you talk about your uncle on the first track. You end as the uncle on the last track. Yeah, I didn't even clock that. Yeah. So uh, is I might end up putting out a project my next after the se after uh, winter. I might put out a project called Uncle Ill because that's what she calls me. One of the other things that struck me while I was listening to it is it feels like you were very intentional with social issues. So we talked about somebody who survived um, sexual abuse. And then, you know, you have the line later on the album where you talk about half human, just trying to live my truth like the trans movement and stand by my fam like Dwayne Wade and Gab Union. Probably catch a lot of hate. Dress for That's coming off of the, the Chinese food reference and, and acknowledging that, you know, it shouldn't even have to be said that. that I grew up listening to rap music. My mom loved rock and roll. We both listening to black music. Don't pretend that it ain't showing respect as a guest and it won't threaten my place. No Chuck Berry, no Elvis legacy paved. The hound dog like Big Mama Thornton. May she rest in a grave. You can love Chinese food and even out the recipe, great. Still Chinese food, end of the day, I'm saying. You no know, hip hop, it, it, it's black music, it's black culture, you know? And I, I just flash back to interactions when I was on Facebook or Twitter with people being like, no, it's bigger than that now and these things and wanting to acknowledge that and and also then acknowledging, you know, just trying to live my truth like the trans movement and supporting people living their truth. But it's also it's an example of itself. By me acknowledging that and the, and being supportive of the trans movement and just people in general living their truth. That's showing who I am a little more, which I hadn't necessarily done as much. That was another piece of that conversation, you know, with my girl of like, give more of yourself and who you actually are. I'm like, well, this is actually me. And by even acknowledging that, I am living my truth, <laughs> like the trans movement. And then acknowledging like that might catch a lot of hate, you know, hip hop is, is ever growing you know, and it has a lot of different facets and, and people and as in within any culture. But, you know, sometimes it, it can be very homophobic and, and prominent people and rappers and whoever else can be, can err on this side of ignorance and, and sort of like promote that or be proud of that or have that as a platform. And I'm no, uh, Angel, when it comes to that, looking at like old battles and in the freestyle era and dropping F-bombs and all these things, like um, 
you know, I, I, I look back at some of that and cringe, but then also I look back at a lot of more of the last few years and I'm proud of like, I wanted to take the easy way out. I don't want to, you know, just rely on tropes and stereotypes and, and these things. And, and that's who I am. And it was important for me to acknowledge that and then acknowledge like, probably catch a lot of hate. And even the line that comes after that is like brushing it off. Like, I don't care. Like, I catch a lot of hate, dress fresh to death, make funeral plans, I'm fashionably late, and moves on from there. Because it's like, you know, that being such a hot topic when Dwayne Wade and, and um, you know, everything with that social thing happen, it's just like seeing so many people that it's like, what do you have invested in, in saying that, that this is a terrible thing? This is a child. What are you concerned about? Like, it was just so mind blowing to me that I just had, like, when I was writing, that just came out as sort of a stream of consciousness because that's, I, you know, want to let that wall down, and that just came out as a result of that. You also kind of mentioned the race aspect. Can you break down your heritage, and then also how did you come to learn about yourself, about your identity? So on Gardetto's and Velour Sweats, which was also Raising the Bar 13, Watch the ricochet, wage a war till I'm black bald, I'm black hot. Me and my queen riding like crazy horse and black shark. You either rebelling or assisting the system. Ghosts dancing along as Peltier sitting in prison. Let me get split with victims of history, the privilege, the pillars, the pillage, immigrants, indigenous. I'm mixing tradition, sitting bull spirit risen to visit my vision. Big difference between getting rich and enrichment. I'm referencing, you know, parts of my heritage right there, or just native heroes. But my whole thing is, and we'll get to even the more quotes like with the trans movement reference with these bars talking about my heritage like one thing that I realized I don't want to do that I didn't like about my old music is I don't want to do the this is the girl song this is the conscious song partial out um key things that are important to me to like one to live on one song you know you look at Pac, Pac would talk about, you know, getting drunk off Alizé and Black Power and fighting against the government all in the same bar on a on a slap, you know, that you, that you want to ride to it in summertime going to a house party or whatever, you know? And what I realize is, is like, don't preach a message. Like, I don't want to preach a message. I want to be the message and then be myself when I create. Because if you just are the message, then just when you're being yourself making art, that's gonna come naturally. And that's what these things, in, you know, I, I have such a range of references and um, on Gardettos, cause that's like, that's my goal. It's just, is whatever comes, whatever comes out where I feel like going, just go there and, and not try to make a whole song about you know, this is the thing that I'm focusing on now. Like that, a lot of times that can come off corny anyways. So this, these lines, bars like, you know, you either rebelling or assisting the system and those dance as long as Peltier's sitting in prison. Lineage split with victims of history, the privilege, the pillars, not pillars as in, as in, you know, uh, the pillars of something like, you know, foundational building box. Pillars as in like pillagers, you know? So lineage split with victims of history, the privileged, the pillars, the pillaged, immigrants, indigenous, I'm mixing tradition. That's like the 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 dichotomy, that's the the polarity of of who I am, you know. <laughs> Watching hours go slow, thinking how'd I grow old? With no rain on my roof, then my flowers won't grow. Been in hibernation, tired of waiting.